Hey guys, welcome to the Sunday Night Prayer Time. You know, uh, when Terry Peer first asked me to be one of the participants in Sunday Night Prayer Time, I felt unqualified. Um, I'm not a preacher by any means. Um, not real comfortable doing this, to be honest. But uh, one thing about me, if you followed me at all, you know, through the Chasing Giants podcast, social media, or whatever, I'm not really one to shy away from tough subjects. Um, I'm willing to pick a side on just about any issue. And tonight, I'm going to talk about a subject that uh, I don't think I've ever heard a preacher talk on. And I'm not saying that I'm a preacher by any means, but uh, I think it's a message that uh, needs to be addressed. Um, whenever I see something that, that I think is wrong, um, I'm one to speak out about it. You know, I had a magazine editor one time tell me that uh, he had never met anyone with a stronger sense of right or ro right and wrong than me, and that whenever I seen something wrong, I had to address it. And I think he's he's kind of right. And tonight's subject, I'm going to talk about girls, 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 girls. And uh, to be real specific, I'm going to talk about how men should treat ladies or, or women. And, uh, you know, to give you a little background history, you know, about myself, um, I grew up in a family with one brother. We didn't have any sisters at all. So it was, it was my brother and I and our parents. And uh, so I didn't have a lot of real close contact with girls, you know, on a personal level. Uh, when I was a young kid growing up and you know I thought girls were one of those uh, weird human beings that had cooties or something and uh, it wasn't until I got a little older and realized that the uh, girls weren't so bad after all and then uh, you know later after I got married and had a couple daughters of my own I, I really started appreciating women more and you know I tell a lot of young guys when, when they have a daughter you know that's just born I tell those guys that you'll never appreciate girls and re really appreciate them until you have a daughter of your own. And that was certainly the case with me. And, you know, over the years, I, I changed my mind on a few different subjects. Um, you know, one of those would be abortion. Uh, when I was in my teens and early 20s, I didn't see anything wrong with it. But, uh, you know, as I matured a as a person and especially as a Christian, I, I realized how wrong that is today. And uh, there, there's just other um, topics like that that as I've grown older and matured, I've just totally changed my mind on. And, uh, you know, one of those was girls. They're no longer those weird people with cooties. Um, you know, God made girls the same as he made men. And, uh, you, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, there's many times in the Bible where God refers to mankind. And he's not talking about just man, but mankind. And, you know, right here from the start, I wanna make a very important point because I know I'm probably gonna get some pushback and some criticism on this topic. But uh, I, I'm not debating the, the different roles that men and women have biblically, you know, as, as husband and wife or within the church or anything like that. That is not at all what I'm talking about this evening. What I'm going to get into is how men should treat women. And I just, you know, I see other cultures, especially in other religions, where women are mistreated, seriously mistreated. And, uh, you know, sometimes um, even abused. I I've seen uh, and or know of, of cultures or religions where women really are not treated much better than livestock and sometimes even worse. And, uh, but what bothers me is when I see Christians um, of whatever denomination um, treating women more like servants instead of uh, equals. And again, there's gonna be some people push back on that and they're gonna cite scripture that, uh, you know, maybe supports a different view. But I think when it really comes down to it, th there's plenty of scripture to support my position um, that, that Christian men should treat women no different than they do other men. So, you know, I, I was uh, 
taught and to this day I believe that you should treat the janitor of a company the same way you would treat the CEO. Um, every person deserves respect and it doesn't matter what their job title and it also doesn't matter what their sex is. Um, there are several um, places in the Bible and I've, I've made some notes here. I did some research before I just jumped into this topic. I, I spent uh, multiple times um, researching scripture and um, reading uh, basically sermons or, or other folks' opinion on, on how men should treat women. Um, but you know, there's a couple of statistics that I wanna throw out first. So the United, according to the United Nations, there are 100 million women missing in this world and 5,000 girls are murdered every year by their parents um, for acting in ways that uh, disgrace their family or shame their family. And I think that gets into a lot of other cultures, uh, not so much what we see here in the United States, but still, I've seen instances myself where Christian men have talked down to women like they were servants, um, slaves almost. And uh, I just think that's wrong. Um, maybe it's because I'm the father of two daughters, but uh, I think we can do better. Um, you know, God took just as much time creating every female or woman as he did every man. I don't believe for a second that we're going to get to heaven and there's going to be this place for women and then in a much higher, much better place, there's going to be the men. I think when we get to heaven, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to matter if you're a man or a woman. Um, we're all going to be equal. Um, so let me share a, a few scripture that I found as I was researching this topic. So in Galatians um, chapter 3, verse 28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ. So right there, he's not differentiating male or female. We are all one in Christ. Um, you know, a lot of the, the things that we see, um, the, the troubling traditions in, in the way women are treated um, are not biblical at all. They're just cultural. Um, different cultures have uh, adopted different ways that they think uh, women should be treated. And, uh, you know, I, I think as Christians, uh, we can do better than that. Um, another scripture, uh, 1 Peter, uh, verse 3 or, or chapter three, verse seven, it says, likewise, husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. So, you know, right there in first Peter, it's, it's telling us that if you do not honor your woman, then your prayers will be hindered. Um, can't be any plainer than that. Um, let, let's move on to another one. In, in Ephesians 5.25, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Think about that. Did Christ love the church? Absolutely. He, he gave his life for us. And he's telling us that is how we should love our wives. Um, later in, in that same chapter, verse 33 uh, however, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So love the wife as you do yourself. Um, I, I want to just share a, uh, a personal feeling of mine, something that uh, my wife knows very well. Um, and guys, if you've got a daughter or even a son, I, I hope you share this with them because... Um, I, I want to share how I think a young lady, one way anyway, that a young lady can tell if she's got a good man, boyfriend, husband, whatever. And it, this is not scriptural. This is just an observation that I've made. But, uh, you know, I cannot stand to pull into a gas station and see a lady out pumping her gas while her boyfriend's husband, whatever, sits there in the car playing on his cell phone or, or whatever. Um, 
if there is ever a way to know that you've got a loser for a boyfriend or a husband, if he's sitting in that vehicle while you're pumping fuel, then he's a loser. He thinks more of himself than he does you. My wife will tell you, I I've got to be deathly sick before I'll sit in the vehicle and let her pump fuel into her vehicle. And it doesn't matter if it's home at our fuel tank here on the farm or if it's at a gas station somewhere. If I'm with her and, and we need fuel in the vehicle, it doesn't matter if I'm driving or she's driving, I'm getting out and pumping fuel. So ladies, if your guy is not pumping the fuel, that's just a sign of trouble to come. If he's your boyfriend, get rid of him, kick that bum to the curb. He's never ever going to amount to anything as far as respect for women. Or if he does, he's got, a, let's just put it this way, he's got a lot of growing up to do because right now, if he sits there and lets you do it, he thinks way more of himself than he does of you. And, and you deserve better than that. that that's just a sign of self-centered troubles to come in your relationship. Get rid of him, get, find you another one. Um, but that's just a sure easy sign uh, for me. Um, if I was ever to see one of my grandsons sitting in a vehicle while his girlfriend pumped the fuel, I would go up to him and grab him by the ears and pull him out of that vehicle and he would be pumping the fuel as I was twisting on those ears. There is no sense in that whatsoever. And that's just one example that, that, that one of my pet peeves, if you, if you will. And you, you might think it's funny or whatever, but that's a sign. If a guy is too lazy to get out of the car to do something as simple as pumping fuel, he thinks way more of himself than he does the lady that's with him. Um, you know, moving on to, uh, to another uh, scripture, I want to go right to the most, probably the famous scripture in the entire Bible, and that's John 3, 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It doesn't say what, who whatever men believes in him. It says whoever. The, the, the gift of salvation is there for ladies just the same as it is men. If, if anybody thinks for a second that God thinks it's okay for a male to mistreat a female, I just I firmly believe that he is sadly mistaken and there's plenty of scripture to back up my opinion. Um, God loves us both, man and woman. And you know it's time that, that Christian men stand up and treat their ladies like they should. And I know the vast majority of them do. It, it's a small percentage that don't. But it's a pet peeve of mine when I see a Christian man talking down to a woman just because he's the man and she's the woman. There is no sense in it whatsoever. Um, guys, again, I, I hope you're showing this to your, your sons and daughters because, you, you know, however you treat your wife, you, you're setting the example. You, you're setting an example for your son. You're showing him how he should treat ladies in the future, be girlfriends, his future wife or whatever. But you're also showing your daughters that this it's okay to be mistreated if you're mistreating your wife. And again, I know most of you aren't. Uh, just, this is just a pet peeve of mine to see women be mistreated. And it also is a pet peeve of mine to see scripture twisted for people to be little women or, uh, you know, you'll basically look at men as superior. And again, I want to stress what I stressed at the very beginning. I absolutely understand that men and women have different roles in marriage. They have different roles within the church. Um, but still, that is no excuse for any man to mistreat a woman. So with that, I'm going to offer a prayer. But guys, I hope you take the time to realize that you're setting an example for both your daughters and your sons. And I hope you're setting a good example. If not, you know, a lot of times this is a something that gets passed down from generation to generation. You know, a man uh, may mistreat his wife because he watched his father mistreat his mother. Well, you can break that cycle, um, whatever it takes, because I'm sure you don't want your daughters being mistreated. If you do, there's something wrong with you. You, you need uh, God's help um, for that as, as, as well as, uh, you know, whatever else. But, you know, it's time that Christian men 
set the example. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get in and start naming different religions. I don't want to start naming um, different denominations of Christians or cultures or whatever. But, uh, guys, it, Christ wants us to treat our women right. He wants us to show love and respect. And uh, I hope you're all doing that. So with that, I'm going to end this in prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity and for everyone who has tuned in to, to watch this Sunday night prayer time. I ask that you be with them, be with their families. I ask that you guide and direct each one of them, that uh, they remember the, the value that um, of the women in their lives. Um, ladies that you created just as well as you created the men and i just pray that uh, those who have not grown up in a home where women were treated with respect and loved and cherished that you will open their eyes and that you will break that curse in those homes father god uh, just ask that you be with everyone um, watching this uh, sunday night prayer time and uh, that they come back each week to listen to a new message I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Tune in next week, and you'll hear a real preacher, maybe, instead of me.